Okay, so we're talking about how we take information from peers and we use that information to understand how popular kids are. I'm gonna show you what it is that we do when we ask kids to pick from a roster of all of their classmates who they like the most and who they like the least. So remember, we were talking before about the idea that for each kid, we calculate how many times they've been picked as like the most and we calculate how many times they've been picked as like the least. And we create two variables with that. One is called social preference, which is the difference between those two measures. And the other is called social impact, which is the sum of those two measures and really tells us about visibility. So here's a graph. And on this graph, you'll see that what we've done is made on the x-axis how much people are picked as being like the most. On the right-hand side, you can see high scores of being like the most. And on the left-hand side, you can see being like the uh, low scores of being like the most. What you can see on the y-axis is that we have like the least. High scores indicate uh, being frequently picked for being like the least. And on the bottom, you can see that you're infrequently picked, or you get very few nominations for being like the least. You might have previously thought that being like the most and being like the least were kind of two ends of the same continuum. It turns out that's not the case. Um, in study after study, what we find is that the number of nominations you get for like the most and the number of nominations you get for like the least, they're not associated at all. They're not at all correlated. So these really are two very different things, which is why we look at it on this type of axis. What we do then is we look at how much you have a high social preference score, which could be plotted as a diagonal, and a high social impact score, which can also be plotted on the opposite diagonal. And once we do this, we're able to identify five different groups of kids. The first group of kids are the kids that we call popular. So the popular kids, in other words, they tend to be very frequently picked as being like the most by others. They're very infrequently picked as being liked the least by others. So that's how we would call, that's what we would call popular. Their counterparts are the kids that are rejected. So they're opposite, therefore, these are the kids that are very frequently picked as being liked the least, and uh, they're very infrequently picked as being liked the most. It turns out, though, there are three other groups that we need to pay attention to that you might not have thought were as obvious. One of those groups are the kids that are not picked for like the most, and they're not picked for like the least. And what researchers have found, and much of this was done first by John Cooey and Ken Dodge, is that that group of kids can be referred to as neglected. These are kind of the kids that they're at school, they're there all the time, they're playing, but they might be the kids engaged in parallel play, or they might be the kids that leave school for a week and no one really notices that they went anywhere, that, that someone is gone. Uh, they're just kind of blended into the woodwork in their schools and they're not very well known. Now their opposites are called the controversials. These kids are highly visible. Everyone knows that they're there. They get lots and lots of nominations, but what makes them controversial is that they get lots of nominations as being like the most, but they also get lots of nominations for being like the least. So they're kind of a love them or hate them kind of group of kids. And they're a really interesting group. Everyone knows them, but some people really hate them and others think that they're great. They are very often class clowns. They're very often engaged in some aggressive behavior, but they don't do it in a way that gets them in a whole lot of trouble. So they're a very interesting group. Now, these four groups have all been studied in many, many different research studies, probably hundreds at this point, to understand how the category you fall in tells us something about your lifetime trajectory. You're probably therefore thinking about which one of these did I fall in, and probably for most of us, you fell somewhere in the middle, which is the average category. So in other words, while you might have been somewhat popular-ish or somewhat controversial-ish, the way that it's designed uh, in how we do this statistically is that about half of kids are average, and only those that meet these extreme criteria are popular, rejected, neglected, or controversial. In fact, statistically, the data suggests that about 15 to 20 percent of kids are going to be popular, rejected, or neglected. The controversial group is a really interesting small group, 
And then about half or sometimes just under half of kids will fall into the average group. Now what's really interesting about this is that what we find is that the category that you are in when this is measured, it stays the same for a very, very long time. In fact, research has shown that if you measure kids in elementary school and then you go back six years later and you look at what category kids are in in the middle of high school, in most cases, kids are still in the same exact category, but some do change. The kids that change, though, don't change randomly. So, of course, most people that change move from one of those extreme groups to the middle, to the average group. You also might see that kids will move from one group to the closest next group. So the populars might become controversial, the controversials might become popular. But despite what you might see in most of the movies starring Freddie Prince Jr., we don't see that rejected people suddenly have a makeover or something happen to them or switch schools and become really, really popular. In fact, that almost never happens. The rejected kids usually stay rejected. Sometimes they become average, but they never become popular, it seems. Similarly, the popular kids almost never become completely rejected. Interestingly, the one group that does seem to be most likely to change are the neglecteds. The kids that are neglected do seem to benefit from going to a new context. And when they get to a new school or when they meet new people, they can become rejected, they can become popular, they can become average, the, and they are least likely to stay in their category. The only group that they're least likely to become a part of over time are the controversials, because that's their opposites. What we'll talk about next are some research studies that have shown that even kids that switch different kinds of contexts dramatically tend to reestablish what level of popularity they had remarkably quickly.